Jarkin Art inside with the Notre Dame defense. Harder the other oh, way. And one. Darren Mabry. The offense for the Irish. West Bell looking for Dotson. Oh, they got such a great connection going. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Neil Ivey Show. I'm Bob Nagel. It's my honor to get a chance to talk to our head coach, Neil Ivey, and back from a big road trip. And, uh, boy, I tell you what, when we talked the last time, we were thinking about that five-game road trip as being a big challenge. It was, but I thought we came through it pretty well. We did. Um, you know, at Michigan State, at, at UConn, two incredible teams. Um, getting an opportunity to be in my first Big Ten ACC Challenge win, so I was really happy about that. And also just a, such a great experience, you know, to, to play in those different um, environments and different arenas. So I was very, very happy with this past couple of weeks with the team. You know, getting to play your first full season. You got the exhibition games in, the uh, non-conference games in, you're nine and two and uh, ranked 21st in the country and uh, just a uh, phenomenal. By the way, you're undefeated in the ACC, which is always great to start out that way. But uh, just been a phenomenal uh, effort of not only winning games, but getting people to learn to play together and finding out what our strengths are. Absolutely. Um, I've had a lot of opportunities to see a lot of different lineups, um, to get experience with some of our, um, our freshmen, obviously, but you know, even our younger freshman, Natalia Marshall, she hasn't played in a couple years. Um, and you know, that's what I love about this team, that each game, it might require a different type of look, um, different type of lineup, and everyone is just you know, hungry and ready, staying ready when that time when their time is called. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a nice group you got there. We're going to talk more about the trip and the games that we played there when we come back. And right now we've got a break coming up, and uh, we'll be back with Coach Ivy. This is the Neil Ivy Show, brought to you by TireRack.com. And we're back with you on the Neil Ivy Show, brought to you by TireRack.com. And Neil, we talked about how uh, you had those uh, five games uh, under your belt when you took off on the road. You were five and zero, oh, and then uh, looking forward to that uh, trip and the teams you're going to play. The Georgia Bulldogs were up first, and uh, this is a team that you know, like a lot of teams on our, our schedule, ranked and a pretty tough team, very athletic team, and and yet you took them to the wire and. Uh, had a good effort. Yeah, I mean, I knew going into that game, you know, SEC is an incredible conference. Uh, it was a team that has, like you said, incredible defense. Um, they pressure full court. They they deny. It was something that we had not seen, especially Olivia, my freshman point guard. So, um, unfortunately, we didn't come out with the win, but I felt like um, sending that game to overtime, we had an opportunity to win that game. Um, and we learned a lot from that experience. And then luckily we only had 24 hours, less than 24 hours to prepare, prepare for Oregon State. Um, and so it was, we were just happy that we can just, you know, play another game right away. Um, and to end up winning that game, uh, Oregon State was ranked at the time, um, an incredible program and team and coaches. So that was a really big win for us. I'll say we've got quite a history now with Oregon State. It seems like we've been fortunate, not fortunate to win. We've had a better team uh, most of the time. But the, again, you a lot of respect for uh, Coach track and, and his team and the way they play oh absolutely you know that's a tournament test a team they've been in the final fours they have been you know sweet 16 elite eights um, and they've had um, produced high caliber WNBA talent and you know that was a again a signature win for us um, it was a confidence booster we came out on fire going up I think 20 points um, you know they had an incredible comeback in the fourth quarter but just to finish that game I thought was incredible for us um, we learned a lot with that um, Thanksgiving tournament Oregon State made a nice comeback in that fourth quarter and uh, again last year we had some trouble handling that kind of pressure in the fourth quarter but this year got it done got people who can get the ball up the floor absolutely um, I felt that you know with our experience and then Dara and, and, and Abby did a great job, a phenomenal job of keeping us, you know, in that game. And, you know, Olivia, was, she was in a, in a situation that she hadn't been in, and I thought she did a great job of just managing the offense. And, again, we found a way to win, and that was the biggest part. And Maya came up with a huge, huge rebound um, at the end and sealed the game. Yeah, Maya almost had a double-double. She, she had did. 14 and 9 in that game. Maddie uh, Westbelt had 11 and 6, and Dara threw in some three-pointers, which is always welcome. We're going to 
be a nice balanced team and people you can put in in different situations. Yeah, this is what I love about our versatility. You know, sometimes I have Abby playing the guard. Sometimes I have to have to play her at the, at the four position. Um, you know, we have Sonia that's incredible coming off the bench. She's having a phenomenal season. Um, she gives us so much energy um, and an offensive spark coming off the bench. Um, and you know, we have Sam. You know, we, there's so many different pieces that can go with so many different um, lineups. So that's great to have so much flexibility and versatility with this team. Somebody asked me the other day, they were watching the games. I thought Abby was in. I said, she is, but she's on the floor. <laughs> you know, it seems like every time she gets in there, she's diving for a loose ball or fighting for a rebound and just uh, giving you that terrific effort. Now it's getting to be a little dangerous. She's scoring. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. She's been, she's worked on her shot. Um, and I'm excited for her to, to, to show, you know, the crowd and our fans that she's always in the gym, always working on her game. Um, but she, I asked her to lead us in, and take and charges taken for this team and she's definitely leading us and that's that's that you want to come off this road trip with a winning mark and in order to do that now all of a sudden michigan state is a huge obstacle on the road mm -hmm. and uh, going into that game is uh, you know that's a fine coach and a good program and uh, well, i want to tell you what it looked like we were really ready oh yeah we were completely ready i mean i'm always excited about the big 10 acc challenge um and i am very familiar with playing at michigan state um an incredibly tough team it's a very hard place to play and um, I felt like we were ready, like you said, and we just really battled to the end, and that was a huge victory for us. By the way, welcome Sonia Citron. She had 20 points in that game, five rebounds, three assists, and just uh, kind of uh, took advantage of opportunities and uh, she could play. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I look at Sonia and, you know, no, she never gets rattled. She's never too high or too low. Very, very similar to Jackie Young. She just goes out there and she just plays hard. Um, she has an incre incredibly high IQ and her shot was falling. I mean, I had to put the ball in her hand almost every possession because she just was scoring at will. She was coming off ball screen. She was finding people. She was rejecting the ball screens. She was catching the shooting in transition. I mean, she was phenomenal that game. She's blocking some shots. Blocking too. shots, playing defense. She did it all for me. Olivia Miles in that game, almost a triple double. And uh, she had points and rebounds, but only eight assists. She was two away from a triple double. Kind of gave us an idea of what might be to come, but uh, that girl's been solid. She had eight, eight, and eight against Connecticut. Yes, I mean, she's um, one of the best floor generals I've seen at, at such a young age. Um, she's great with pace. Um, she is great in the open floor. I've tried to open the floor up for her, um, but she's very unselfish. You know, she loves setting her teammates up. And, you know, fortunately, she has a great uh, crew of uh, teammates that can receive the ball and, and make plays. Well, I'll tell you what, that uh, win at Michigan State was uh, so phenomenal because now you're two and one on a road trip, six and one overall, mm -hmm. and uh, going to play Connecticut with some confidence. Now, again, mm -hmm. a lot of respect for Connecticut, uh, one of the top teams in the country. We go in there playing Gamble Pavilion. It's always a baptism of fire. But I thought one of the things you're really concerned about. Can we compete? Mm -hmm. And I thought we did that well. Absolutely. I felt like going into that game, that was my first time playing against um, UConn as head coach. And, you know, I've had that experience as assistant for, what, 15 years okay. um, as a player. So I know how that moment, the atmosphere can sometimes be very big and the magnitude of it. So I felt like our team was ready. Um, and they were excited to play. And um, we had, I felt like, three really great quarters. I thought we competed the fourth quarter. Um, I thought Paige Beckers took over, unfortunately. Um, but it's still, it's a, learning, it's a lesson. It's a learning experience. But um, you gain a lot of confidence. You gain a lot of wisdom in, in a game like that, you know, playing against a second-ranked team in the country. Yeah, we should mention how much uh, our prayers are with Paige Beckers and Absolutely. her challenge. Uh, I know somebody personally that went down with a knee injury in a game yes. like that. And you know how tough it is to rehab and everything. But wish her the best. She's a terrific, terrific talent. Absolutely. I tried to talk to her afterwards. You know, you never want to see that in any game, you know, them having to carry her off in her own crutches. Um, and just I prayed for her. And, um, you know, she's a phenomenal young woman, um, you know, she's an incredible basketball player, but just wishing her safe and healthy, quick recovery. Sonia had 19 points against Connecticut, and uh, all of a sudden on a national TV game, they say, we say, welcome Sonia, but a lot of people got to see her play and uh, yeah. very impressed with her. Oh, absolutely, I feel like she's just, you know, she's trending in such a positive direction. Um, but again, she just she comes in every game with the same mindset. She's a competitor. Um, she wants to do whatever she she can to help help the team win. Um, she's extremely coachable, um, and I just think that she's going to continue to get better and better every time she steps on the floor. 
get back to town for a brief break, but not again. We get to come back and repack our suitcase or whatever, but then head over to Valparaiso, which is always a challenge to play in the arc over there. And again, uh, we've got a target on our back. This is Notre Dame. This is a top 25 team. They wanted to play us tough, and uh, they, they gave us a good effort. Yes, they did. Um, just down the road, 45-minute drive. It's always hard to play at Valpo, no matter what year, um, no matter who's playing, who's coaching. They're just an incredibly tough in-state um, opponent, and um, they, they, they shot the ball extremely well in the first half. Um, we finally tied the game at the halftime. It was a struggle. I had to change a lot of different lineups because of their offense, it's a very intricate style of offense. Had to go four-guard lineup, something I'm not um, particularly um, haven't been doing that much this year with playing two bigs. Um, but we adjusted. I had a lot of in-game adjustments and I was very proud of the resilience of our group and we found a way um, to extend that lead in the third quarter um, and come out victorious. It's always a nice adjustment you make when you go four guards. If they're playing four or if they've got a big that now has to guard a guard, mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't work out too well. We've seen that over the years. It's been a real good combination for the Fighting Irish. And see, Olivia Miles, yeah, she had a good game. <laughs> Triple double. Yeah, I was so proud of her. I, I didn't really, I didn't know, um, you know, until after the game, and we celebrated that for her, her first triple double. Um, I think she had, you know, 11 points, 11 rebounds, and 13 assists. Yeah. And she just, um, she's just a special young lady, and I'm just excited to see um, her continue to grow. And it's, it's not easy running a team as a point guard. It's a lot of responsibility. It's normally always the point guard's fault if things go awry. Um, and she's taking on this this huge role uh, with such class, and she just wants to get better. And I, I'm just proud that she's getting the recognition that she deserves. Well, a lot of her assists went to Maddie Westbell that night. She had 20 points and four rebounds. And Sonia almost had a double-double. She had nine points but 10 rebounds. Yeah, she does whatever we need. I mean, we needed her on the boards. We needed a lot of defense. And um, she made some timely plays for us. And, um, you know, she's an incredible passer, but she's a big guard, so she can really help us on the boards. And I thought she did that. You did a terrific job. And uh, Abby uh, Prohaska comes in with nine points. They so said she's starting to score, but she gets the ball. When she gets the ball in the low post, it's in and off the glass and in the basket so quick. Mm -hmm. A real veteran. Oh, absolutely. She plays. She's a very high IQ. She knows where to be. Um, she knows all the plays, um, and she helps everybody on the floor because she's played so smart. Um, and you can trust her defensively. She's going to be the one that's going to rotate over to help the helper, um, to take a charge, to sacrifice her body for, her, and to get a loose ball, 50-50 ball. So um, just love her energy and her toughness on, on the court. It was nice to get home. It was nice to finish that road trip with a winning mark. It was uh, great to see the recognition we're getting from around the country, the mm -hmm. respect, I think, that's coming back to the program which is great. And uh, then you get a chance to come home and uh, a real special day on Sunday. And I know you're going to visit with Coach McGraw later in the show. But, man, what a special uh, moment. Our staff did a great job, I thought, in getting everybody ready. The fans showed up. What a special day. Oh, it was so special. Um, it was just um, a weekend to remember and had a chance to, to, to spend some time with, with Coach McGraw Saturday evening. You know, she had a special event with her family and friends. And then to be able to, to watch her receive the love the appropriate way, you know, last year with COVID, you know, we we didn't get a chance to really give our, um, you know, give a, 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 a very good tribute or farewell to Coach McGraw. And so um, it was beautiful. You know, her speech was incredible. So many former players came back to honor her. And I was just really proud. You know, it's my first time being on the other end to um, to watch her um, to be in part of the, the Ring of Honor to be inducted because I was fortunately inducted as a um, from being a player and it was just special. She's a special woman and she also gets a statue. Um, yeah, you know, she's that. done so much for the program. She's uh, she's done so much for me individually, you know, personally. But what she's done for the game, Notre Dame, the community, it's it's very fitting for her to receive that love and for her to have her own statue and to be in the in the up in the rafters. Well, they should have a picture of all the people carrying her off the floor. But, uh, <laughs> uh, by the way, those players that came back, a lot of them looked like they could still fly. They could. I would have put them in if I could. <laughs> <laughs> so you got this game with uh, Purdue, Fort Wayne. And again, they, were, they came out and actually watched the pregame ceremony, which I thought was really classy. Mm -hmm. And then they came on and hit some threes on us. And, uh, <laughs> I so didn't think that was very classy. It certainly got our attention. <laughs> Yeah, they played really well. Um, we actually run the same style of offense. They run a little bit of Ch Princeton and Chin. Um, I didn't think that they had any fear. Um, they have a very, really good young coach. 
um, she played a, you know, a tribute to Coach McGraw. She was honored um, to be able to be to be at this at you know playing us on Sunday. Um, so I have a lot of respect for her. And you know, their team came out. They played hard. Um, I felt like they came out with an incredible start. Um, and we finally got ourselves going. Um, we, I think it was just an emotional, emotional time for our team. You know, we have finals this week, and it finally took us about the second half to really, um, to really start playing our game. And then we started um, push, pulling away um, and end up winning big. But it was, it was a very emotional day for everybody. We got the game going up and down the floor, and they were looking at like, wow, they got so many good athletes, mm -hmm. which is uh, really great. And you had uh, a couple of. Uh, Really nice performances in the game. And uh, again, uh, Sonia Citron uh, was in double figures. We had six players in double figures in that game. That's terrific. Yeah, that was awesome. I love seeing that stat to see so many people contribute. Um, that's what I want to see. Um, I, I, I want to score in the 80s, you know, that'd be perfect. Um, but just to see so many people, I got a chance to play everybody on the team, um, even with our walk on. So that yeah. was very, very happy. I was very happy about that. Didn't get a Big Mac. I really wanted to get a Big Mac. <laughs> but I think I got. Um, Maybe McFlurry. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't get a Big Mac, but I just I was happy that everybody contributed. You got a nugget. I got I got one nugget. Yeah. I want to mention one other player that I thought was uh, really exceptional. It's good to see her get those kind of numbers. That was Anaya Peoples. Yes. She uh, almost had a double double. She almost had a double double. One of six players in double figures. They said, but. She uh, really exerted herself on the boards, and mm -hmm. she, you know, we know that she has that, and we know that she's going to do that more for us. Yeah, I mean, she's a bigger guard. Um, she plays so hard, um, and she does whatever I ask. And so it was, it was great to see her be able to get out and score in transition. Um, she made some really great plays um, off the ball screen, and then, like you said, she got on the glass, which we need. And I, I need that from her a lot, and she does that for me. Well, you came back from the trip. You had a great experience with Coach McGraw. Been a lot of highlights already in this season, and yet we're not uh, a third of the way through yet. But uh, we're going to be here quickly with the ACC games and, and uh, get another road trip coming up to DePaul. That's yes. for shopping? No. Yes, it is for both. It's working, it's working uh, <laughs> shopping. <laughs> All right, we'll talk about the upcoming schedule a little bit, but uh, congratulations. You're 9-2. and two. You're 1-0 in conference play. You're ranked 21st in the country. <sighs> That was a good W's. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, I just try to celebrate all the small victories, and um, I'm just grateful. You know, I'm in a position where it's my dream job. I know Coach McGraw talked about that. Living her dream, I live mine as well every day. So I'm, I'm grateful to, to be here and, and grateful that we're, we're getting better. Well, because of that lady, a lot of us got to live some dreams and yes. be part of something special. So uh, we're going to take a break. When we come back, uh, Coach Ivy will visit with Coach McGraw, and we've got some other special features coming up. You're watching The Neil Ivy Show, brought to you by TireRack.com. Hey, Irish fans, it's Dara Mabry here. Thank you so much for tuning into week two of the radio show. This week, we're getting in the holiday spirit, and we'll be making sugar cookies. First and foremost, wash your hands and disinfect your area. Parchment paper, a rolling pin, dough, butter, and whatever sprinkles you want. The holiday shapes that I have tonight are a Christmas tree and a gingerbread man. I also got my nails done red, in case you guys wanted to know. First, we're gonna take the dough and roll it out. Forget the rolling pin, just use your hands. I used a little flour to limit the stickiness of the dough, but once your dough's all rolled out, you can go ahead and start shaping your cookies. I said it was safe to eat it raw. Next, you're gonna take a little bit of butter for each cookie and spread it on. I wish I had one of those brushes that my mom uses, but we're just gonna have to go with a spoon. Place them in the oven on 350 degrees for about seven to eight minutes. Mm. Welcome to the Neil Ivy Show, and my guest this week is Coach Muffet McGraw, our newly inducted 
Ring of Honor honoree, uh, welcome to the show again. Thanks, Neil. And you know exactly what it feels like to be in the <laughs> Ring of Honor. I'm so happy to be up there with you. Oh my gosh, this weekend was amazing. I just wanted to kind of get a recap of how you felt. Um, it was an incredible celebration. Um, you had an incredible speech. I, I was almost moved to tears, as always. Um, but it was just an amazing weekend, so I just want to know how you felt about the entire production. Well, it was, everything was awesome. And just really from the beginning when my family arrived and we just kind of sat around and told stories all night long. And then we had a, a really fun party on Saturday night, did a little dancing, got a little exercise. And then uh, it was a little stressful. It felt like game day on Sunday. Like, oh my God, I got to make a speech. I hope it goes okay. I hope I don't forget anyone. And of course I did forget a couple of people, uh, namely Father Jenkins, who I apologize. And, uh, but it was, it was just so moving and emotional. And then to have everybody that I care about in the world be there to share with me and especially our fans you know I never really got to say goodbye mm -hmm. so it was uh, it was a really it was a great moment out on the court and it's always for me it's always beautiful to hear you talk about your son um, and obviously Murphy and then um, your husband so that so how was it just experiencing that with them y your whole career but being able to be here University of Notre Dame this program that you built from the ground up and just to celebrate that with them well in a lifelong dream and and I got to live the dream all the time and sometimes it didn't feel like a dream as you remember um, but you know you never look at the people behind you making all the sacrifices Matt made so many sacrifices I missed quite a few things uh, that Murphy was doing uh, you know I missed games I, I missed events I missed big things and they never complained you know they, they just were always behind me always helping always there and and those people don't get enough credit and that's why I really believe that Matt's name should have been up there somewhere uh, in a little corner in somewhere yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and really, only every player and every assistant coach, I mean, it's just such a group effort. And that, that's what makes it special when you get to celebrate with all those people. Absolutely. And then there was a big surprise for our entire community, your statue. So how did you feel finding out that you're going to have a statue next year? Well, I mean, it's so humbling, and, and I was really overcome with emotion when I found out, and I just thought, oh my God, like, this is, like, that's only for football, you know? Right. And, and for Notre Dame to honor a woman, I, I think I'm just so excited about that. And of course, the first question everybody wanted to know if I would be crouching, you know? And uh, <laughs> it's like, I haven't even thought about it yet, but I'm not gonna be crouching, so stop asking the question. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. I'm sure you probably will be. Yeah. Or, you know, the signature coming, yeah. hands up. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, and I know I, I asked you about this last year, but your keys to success, because you are one of the most successful women I've ever known, um, so powerful, I've always admired your strength, I've admired um, your wisdom and everything you've done um, as a mother, but also as you know our leader and your success as a coach. So talk to, talk to our fans about your keys to success. Well, I think the keys to success, first you have the vision of where you want to go. You know, what do you want to be? Uh, what, what is it going to look like? What do you want people to say about you? What is your reputation of your team going to be? How's it going to look? And so you, first you set the course of, of this is what I think we can be, a national champion. And then you set the plan. How are we going to get there? And for us, as you know, we would talk to the players all the time. Transparency and clarity is so important. This is exactly what I need you to do. I don't need you to do anything else. These are the roles that you have to do for us to be successful and holding them to that and holding them accountable for what their job is and telling them in front of everybody. So the whole team knew who the, who the shooters were. So when their mom and dad was yelling, shoot, everybody on the team knew, don't, don't shoot, it's not your job. And, and I think, you know, I was, I was hard to please. I know I, I expected more all the time, it was never enough. And, and when you recruit players that like that, that want to be great, it works out really well. And sometimes you don't have the players that want to be great, and mm. so they want to be satisfied with where they are. And so to constantly push them and demand them, uh, but you have to have that kind of kid that really wants that. And we were fortunate we had so many of them, uh, starting with Skyler and then going all the way through. All, all those great teams had those kind of players. And this generation's a little different. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't, they like to be acknowledged and they like to be complimented and they like to be praised. And I think you have to do that, but I think at the same time, you still gotta hold them to that high standard. Absolutely. Um, what are your leadership qualities? Or what is the qualities that you see in leaders? Well, I think honesty. Uh, honesty is number one. And, and now that I'm teaching a class, I actually have the top four, according to a <laughs> survey of 10,000 people. Um, honesty is number one. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I look at Father Hesburgh and I just say, like, there was a great leader and honesty was certainly number one for him. The second is competence. You have to be good at your job. Mm -hmm. I mean, people have to trust you that, that you're going to do the right thing. Um, and then the forward thinking and, and looking ahead. 
and then inspiring people. Mm -hmm. How are you going to motivate? How are you going to have your vision and have the passion to make it compelling enough that people go like, man, I want to get on that. I want to get on that bus mm -hmm. and I want to play for that team. So I think those are the really the four most important things. That's awesome. Um, I got I get a chance to rewatch this and then I can write all this stuff down because it's exactly what I need to hear sometimes. Um, what's your wisdom for first time coaches? I know you gave me a lot of advice, um, but if there's someone that's watching, you know, first time in a job, but yeah. for, you know, in our respective um, careers, it's coaching. You know, there's so many things you have to learn for yourself and experience. It's like being a freshman. You know, you can't tell anybody anything, but being yourself. Mm -hmm. I mean, you 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 have so many great qualities as a coach already, and you just have to continue to do what's comfortable for you. You can't try. I used to go to clinics when I started coaching, and I would come back and be, like, oh my god, I got to change that. Oh, I got to do that. They they were successful. Let me try this. And I kept bringing everybody else's ideas in, and and finally I thought, you know, I need to do what's right for me and for my team. So mm -hmm. kind of having that plan of what's what's going to work for me and for my team. The kind of leader that you are, there's so many different kind of leaders, you know, and you don't have to be that outgoing, extroverted, you know, give the pep talk kind of coach. You can, mm -hmm. you know, I was an introvert. I, I really didn't like speeches. So you can be any kind of person, but you have to be yourself. And that's, that's really the important thing. But I think that honesty and transparency of everybody knows this is exactly what your job is and the trust. You have to have the trust with your team because you can't hold somebody accountable if they don't trust that what you're saying is right. And you mm -hmm. can't be honest with them if they're not going to receive that because right. they know you care about them. So I think that's really important. Absolutely. Um, I wanted you to take us back to your first day at work here at Notre Dame. So the first day at work and then your first game day. You know, when I first came here, first of all, I had three full-time assistants that I never had assistants before. When I was at Lehigh, I had three graduate students that took turns missing practice to go to class. So I, I was like, wow, what, what am I supposed to do? You, you guys are doing all the work. And they, they did. They did all the, you know, they got all the recruiting and, and everything ready. And so, you know, I, I was just trying to find the rhythm of, you know, where do I fit in here? And what, what is my role going to be exactly in, in recruiting and in scouting and in the community and in practice and, and all these things? So... I know I was nervous, but back then the good thing for me was nobody was watching. You know, back when I started, hell, we, we got a couple hundred people, maybe, maybe. I think if we got 200, we'd be like, what a crowd. And, you know, nobody was looking over my shoulder, you know, telling me what I was doing wrong. There was no social media. I didn't have to read anything. Um, so I really was fortunate that I was able to make a lot of mistakes, which I did and learn from them, you know, as, as you moved on. And then the first game, I mean, I was a wreck the first game, but as it turns out, I was a wreck for the last game. <laughs> I mean, I have been a wreck for every game through my entire career. And I remember saying to Homer Drew at Valparaiso, when does it get easy? You know, when do you relax? And he said, when you do, you should probably retire. And, uh, and it's funny because you saw me in the locker room. I mean, I was just, I was more nervous for the bad teams. Because yeah. God, if we lose to an unranked team, what if we lose to a team with a losing record? Oh my God, like that would like, so that's why I was calmest for Connecticut. You know, that was the game I enjoyed because I was like, we're the underdog. You know, we can relax and, and just play. Um, what are your next big projects? I'm going to get involved with Habitat for Humanity. The Women's Build, of course, you know I'm mad for women. Mm -hmm. So the Women's Build is going to be the McGraw Women's Build. And okay. so we're going to start that next year here in South Bend and hope that we can get a lot of women to come out and following in the Carter Yes. project and all that. Um, I think Habitat's such a great organization. I've loved being involved in the mm -hmm. food bank, a little bit with Run uh, Girls on the Run, and now the Habitat will be my next adventure. That's awesome. I was wondering about your food, the food bank because I'm gonna you raise so <laughs> many, um, I'm not sure pounds or how you, you accumulate you know, what you guys do, but I've seen you in the community so much, especially during the uh, pandemic, the quarantine. Yeah, yeah, it was great. 25,000 pounds my first year. And then the alumni came in and we got 195,000 pounds across the country. So that was really special. Awesome. Well. Tell, tell our fans what your favorite, favorite book. I have a couple of favorites. So what's your favorite book or what's, what book are you reading right now? Well, you know, my favorite leadership book is Legacy uh, by James Kerr. And it is a great book about the New Zealand All Blacks rugby team, the most successful team in the world. They've won more championships than anyone. And they have these mantras. They have like 15 mantras of things that they do. And one of them was leave the jersey in a better place, which I've always thought, I've always wanted to do that, you know, come in, leave the team in a better place. And I, I hope that each player thinks mm -hmm. that way too. Uh, but they have so many just really 
great leadership principles about humility uh, is a really important one for them. So that, that's, that's my favorite leadership book. I've read uh, The Confidence Code, which is a great book for women to read. Okay. We, we just, we all struggle with that in so many ways, and the players do too, so that, that's a good one. Um, and then I, you know, I read a lot of books. I read this great book called Expect More. Uh, <laughs> I have too. The author sent it to me. <laughs> I read that in one night. Yeah, I read it one hour. Yeah. <laughs> I was just looking at the pictures. <laughs> it's actually an amazing read. You guys have to, to get that one. Um, but I need to get Legacy. I'll probably go get it today. Yeah, that's a good one. Awesome. Well, thank you again for sharing your secret of success. Um, thank you for all that you've done for me. Personally, I know you always know, you always hear this, but and also what you've done for this program, this community. Um, it was just so amazing to stand there and watch you um, receive the love, but also watch your name get dropped in that banner to be a part of history, even again. Um, <laughs> and now to be the first female statue yeah. on campus is huge, and no one in the world deserves it more than you. Well, thanks. And I am just so happy that I passed the torch to you. I, I, am, I am just so proud of you and everything you've done. Thank you. Try to continue to make you proud. <laughs> yeah. You always do. <laughs>it's been a lot, you know, easier for me and easier to trans transition. And I was able to really prioritize and focus on the things that I knew were important because I learned that um, a semester ago. Throughout this first year, Olivia, what is one moment or a couple of moments that you will always remember? Yeah, so um, it was definitely after the game. Um, I can't remember if it was Bryant or someone else, but we had just gone five and oh. And Niel came into the locker room, Coach, Coach Ivy, and she had water bottles and everyone was just throwing it up. And, and it was just a really fun time because it, it had been the first time um, the Irish had gone five and out um, in about a couple of years. So it was just fun to see the excitement and the accomplishments. And especially for Coach Abby, I'm, I'm really sure that meant a lot to her. So that was fun. Absolutely. And speaking of your triple double, so coming off of that being your first triple double, I'm sure there'll be more to come. Um, you know, doing that as a freshman, what has that felt like knowing that you're accomplishing feats like that? Yeah, um, it was just crazy to me. Um, I kind of came came into the game for knowing what I um, wanted to do that game. Um, I talked about it, I had envisioned it, I had manifested it. So um, it was awesome to kind of see what I had been talking about, what I had been striving for come to life. And especially so young, I feel like um, I really don't even think of my age um, like that oftentimes. So it's just, it's crazy to me that, you know, I, I have the ability to um, do these sorts of things um, compared to other freshmen in the country. So it's, it's awesome. Absolutely. And then continuing on, not only triple doubles, but you're leading the country in assists right now. So you have this amazing ability to make some of the hardest passes that you can make. Um, as a point guard, what goes through your head when you're dribbling the ball up the court and putting us in an offense? What are you thinking? Yeah, I'm just thinking, um, what, what, what can we get here? What, what's the defense giving us? Um, based on prior plays, um, just making adjustments, seeing um, what people need to get a shot, um, what play works well. Um, in what time. So I'm still learning the whole shot selection and um, which play is the right play in the right moment. And I feel like um, my thought process coming down the court is just like, what, what's the best shot we can get here? So. Absolutely. And my last question for you, it's kind of like a food for thought question. If you can be remembered for one thing at Notre Dame, what do you want to be remembered for? Well, I think we kind of just talked about it, just like my passing ability. I feel like um, 
I'm so unique because of my passing ability and um, you don't see it very often. Um, I mean, I haven't seen like a pass first point guard in a long time. So I feel like I want to give people like a refresher, you know, um, someone who plays like me who can set the set you know, their teammates up and just get easy baskets for people. And I feel like um, I want to be known for someone who makes other people better. Well, I think you're going to be known for a lot more than just that, Liv. Thanks for joining me today for Full Court Press, and we will see you guys next time. Go Irish! Go Irish! And we welcome you back to the Neil Ivy Show, brought to you by TireRack.com. We have a couple minutes, Coach, to talk about what's ahead. And again, it's been a great start to the season. And uh, got another challenge, ACC challenge, coming up with Pittsburgh. Yes, we do. Um, excited, again, to play in the ACC, to play an ACC opponent. And we're at home, so that's very exciting. Um, we have a week of finals, so I um, you know, hope our team is mentally there, you know, they can relax. I know it's very stressful, you know, with finals. So we're looking forward to that. I mean, Pitt has an incredible team. Um, Everett, one of their leading scorers, she's an incredible scorer. And we have our hands full, but I'm just, I'm excited for this challenge. And then you go up to Wintrust Arena, which is where we won a regional, mm -hmm. and uh, on the way to a Final Four. Uh, you're gonna play Doug Bruno on a team, uh, the DePaul Blue Demons always, uh, had a talented team. It's going to be another good challenge. Absolutely. They um, are a team that's going to press full court the entire game for 40 minutes. It's very hard to play. DePaul, you know, we've had a, a, a many, many battles with them. Um, but I'm excited. It's going to be the Winterest Arena. You know, um, just have been there a couple times with our WNBA um, finals players, you know, um, Skyler and, and uh, Brianna Turner playing there. So great venue, and it's going to be an incredible competition right before Christmas, so it's going to be very exciting. And the good news is when they used to play on campus, we could only get maybe three, 400 tickets, and now we're playing Wintrust. If anybody wants to go, they could certainly get a ticket to that game and root on the Fighting Irish. Absolutely. I'm hoping the Notre Dame Club of Chicago comes out to support. Um, I feel like we have a lot of Irish fans, a lot of Irish alum that are going to come to, come to that game, so we're like, looking forward to it. Well, and then you, uh, you take off more ACC action at Virginia at Duke, but you know, we've traveled so much already that the ladies are pretty used to unpacking and living out of a suitcase. We are, I mean, we're, we're battle tested. You know, I love the blue uniform, so no matter where we're playing, you know, it's just an opportunity and a blessing to be to be able to put those uni that uniform, uniform on and to represent Notre Dame. Well, I'll tell you what, it never looked better, the blue uniform never looked better when you're hugging Kevin McGuff after a, <laughs> a national championship game. But uh, uh, we appreciate the time that you spend with us on the, on the show and uh, we wish you all the best in the coming uh, weeks. And we'll be back uh, probably early January. Perfect. Another show. Happy holidays. Thank all you. All right. The Neil Ivy Show has been brought to you by TireRack.com. I'm Bob Nagel. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time.